They simply wouldn't go into the commercial uh, art exhibitions because they have no part in it. They'll never be able to buy the art at the prices that these galleries charge. Hi, my name is Fred Ebami. I'm a pop artist. And my influences are Andy Warhol, Basquiat, Liechtenstein, Toscani, a graphic from Bennington. Uh, basically, what I aim to do with my work is to um, try to pick up uh, where Andy Warhol kind of left it and make it more modern with uh, some graffiti, some vibrant colors. I do think that probably they ignore us because it is so good. You see, they could not write anything condescending or patronizing about it. They would have to accept it as a mainstream talent. The press has ignored this initiative literally since its beginning. And that is amazing because we are actually one of the largest single exhibitions, including space-wise, not just participation-wise. The problem with our art and design scene at the moment is that it does treat African and Caribbean design still in a tokenistic way. My name is Barker. The work I'm exhibiting from my trip to Australia, Alice Springs, in 2013. My agenda of my work is to share my story and to share my language, which is my art. Continue to share story, continue to share my experience, and wherever it goes, it goes. I will always document my experience through my art. Like culture's forever, art is forever. Future, you know? It is what it is. So totally different in its approach in the way it expresses itself and the colours they use and just the whole strength of the artistic expression is, is different and noticeable. It's also difficult for the public to, um, to choose which organisations or institutions to go with because there is so much to choose from. I did the extended dissertation and they, the tutor said just please do not submit 12,000 words. Just don't do it. And I submitted just shy of 11,000. You had an inkling of how difficult it would be to establish such a platform. Of course one can either say uh, such a platform is not really wanted by mainstream um, art promoters who actually also promote now African art. What we actually set out to do is to actually reach the community, not the middle class person who thinks that watching or going into art exhibitions is part of his um, educational remit for people who want to come. We've done um, exhibitions in Tate Britain, we've um, kind of had loads of different things outside of music as well, like we've had vinyls done, we've had so much different things done, and, but our main aim for 2015 is to have like a live band and bring music to a, a, a real platform of real musicians and real artists appreciating our sound and performing our sound. Personally, I feel as a Caribbean artist that, you know, whatever I, whatever I put out, it doesn't necessarily have to be about culture or, um, or my roots, it's about the artistry, you know, and this is what I did with Max Kaiser, something I consider as artistry. It's got a meaningful message, you know, it's not Caribbean, it's not Soka, it's not Calypso, it's not Bashment, but it's soulful and it's real, and it's, it, it means something to us, so we just pull it out there to you, the people. I exhibited with the AACDD in 2011. By 2012, I was part of the creative direction team working on the graphic design. And by 2013, I was part of the curation team. My work is a combination of Western and African cultures. I'm very interested in West African symbols. The African and Caribbean design diaspora features 30 artists this year using different mediums of art and design, photography, film, and it allows us to celebrate the now as well as look into the future of art and design within the African and Caribbean diaspora. 
from my point of view, um, especially the African and the African Caribbean minorities, they have always had to fight against the odds. Mm. And it has created strengths. And I think it is so much better to work with people who are convinced they want to be part of it than with people who go wherever they offered a better opportunity. Mm -hmm.